Right now on Beers in the Shed, Jesse and I are sitting down with a cold one and look where we are. Loyalty Beach in Cape York have just completed the tally track with not two new cars, but three. One of them you can't even see and it's gonna be a good one. Make sure you grab a beer, sit down in the shed, sit down on the couch and give it a watch. This is your fridge, mate? It is my fridge, mate. Yeah, I might have myself, you want a beer? Oh yeah, new Graham. <laughs> Thanks mate, I'd love a beer. Oh, it's Cheers, a boy. Mate. Cheers. Cape York beer, how mm. good? Ah, oh, don't you dare, I thought you were gonna blow that up, eh? Welcome to a very special episode of Beers in, in the, the shed. shed. Mate, well, we're not in the shed, we are at Loyalty, Loyalty Beach. Beach. And this is gonna be a very special episode of Beers in the Shed because we wanna go through those two vehicles behind us. Mm. The big Parenti and of course, Jesse's BMW GU, which has been amazing, mate. Touch wood, touch, touch wood. Touch wood. I mean, considering, I mean, we'll get into all this, mm. we'll get into all this, but the fact you only just finished the conversion mm. and now you're up here in a beautiful part of the world. Yeah. Plus, of course, we've got to go through the camera car, the yep. new camera car that we're going to be showing you guys, as well as your favourites, rigs, fails, and all the rest. So, mate, we've got a couple of questions here from a couple of people who want to know a little bit more about the GU since it's been finished. Get that BMW car done. Well, it's done. It's done. It's not completely done. There's another question they're asking about the paint. Mm -hmm. That is one thing I did not have time for, and you guys are probably going to notice the left-hand side hole in the guard is still there. I've got a silver guard, as you guys know. I just didn't have time to paint the car, but... I'm kind of glad I didn't get that time to do it before Cape York because the flares on the back have copped a beating. There's some scratches everywhere. So I probably wouldn't have driven it as hard if it was freshly painted. So when I, when I get back, I'm going to have to fully clean the inside and maybe get the outside ready for some paint. Good idea. Good mm. idea. Tell us about the GU because that thing has been epic on this trip. Yeah. Let's go through it. Well, it was an epic and a half to even get it ready. Probably the last three to four weeks before Cape. I don't think I went to bed before 2 a.m. Like I was just flat out. And mm -hmm. my job list kept getting smaller and I add a couple on. Smaller, add a couple on. And it's always so much fun when you got that list, hey, and you're like, want to tick stuff mm. off and then you add stuff and you're like, yeah. no. <laughs> and it's the last five, 10% that you don't want to rush. You want to try and do it right, but you're trying to rush it and you just, you can't cut any corners. So no. it just takes time. But um, to be honest, I probably only had 300 Ks on it before I left for Cairns. And Is I that was, all? Yeah, I yeah. was super nervous. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know anything about the car really, and I was still learning about it. But um, touch wood, it's done the tally track. I had a couple of little dramas. I had a charging issue when I had to change one sensor on the engine. Other than that, super happy with it. Heaps of power. It's turning real good fuel figures, all that sort of thing. So couldn't be couldn't be happy with it really. Touch wood. I hope it's not jinxing myself. Yeah, yeah I'm still going to get home. Mate, I don't reckon you will be jinxing yourself. It's a testament to you um, and and the way you built that vehicle. The fact that you pretty much just finished the conversion did. Probably less than a week's worth of driving mm. and away you went yeah. up to the Cape. We've done thousands of Ks yeah. through some pretty rough stuff. The water up here, there's been a lot of it. It's oh, been deep, and gnarly and muddy. Mud. Everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's mm. been loving it. Yeah. And absolutely loving mm -hmm. it. Definitely. One thing I've been super happy with is the Razlar front bar, especially on a Series 4 GU. It's really hard to get a good approach angle. That's tucked up nice and tight. It is tucked up quite yeah, close. Yeah, I've got eh? room for a yep. winch and it's still a front vent cooler. And you, you've, you'll see it on the videos coming up. I'm wedging down steep things and it just sort of... It's got a big ramp in the bottom. It just skids its way out. I have noticed that because a lot of GU front bars, they sit out a fair mm. way. They kind yeah. of got like a bottom yeah. chin yeah. sticking out. Whereas that, that sits up nice. It's just tucked in and mm. it works. I like it. Yeah. Well, mate, it really is a testament to you and how you build vehicles. The fact that you put that thing together and you've done not that much testing and mm. you've sent it up the Cape and it's been loving it. But yeah. obviously it's one thing to have an engine that goes broom to get up here, but it's yeah. another thing to, to live out of the vehicle. So yeah. what are some of the mods and things you've done to get it Cape ready? Yeah, well, pretty much the last time you would have seen or anyone else who's watched the videos, it was bare bones. I just got it started. I hadn't even driven it. So it was it was started and driving, but it was a fully bare car. So obviously at the tail end of a project, most people know this, the budget gets super tight. So I was pinching other bits off me cars and stuff. So it's got, I bought one drawer for the bottom and it's a modular system. So I took the other one out of my GQ, stuck on top, got a clear view slide in there, kept the fridge nice and low. Yep, yep. Um, I took the fridge cage out of my GQ, sat that in there. Um, yeah, just, just a real simple 12 volt system. Like, you know, everyone goes hectic with lithium and solar and stuff these days. I knew we we're going to do a lot of driving. So it's got a lead acid battery in the back and a voltage sensitive relay. So yeah, um, didn't you steal that out of your missus car or something? Yeah, or? so the, the voltage sensitive relay is out of my missus car and the battery is out of my caravan. That's how, <laughs> that's how tight things are getting towards the end. But it just goes to show, like it hasn't gone below. I think we've had lights in the fridge running on, I think it's 12.4 in the morning. Like you don't have to spend three grand on a battery nah. setup. If you're driving a bit, it's happy days. Yep. Um, I've got the roof rack on and the big uh, EFS awning. That makes it so easy. I've never had an awning that flash. 270 degrees, 
easy to set up, easy to pack down. I like that it folds back onto the rack too. Yes, yeah, so it was. It, they're quite a big thing. Any mm. two seventy degree awning and it hung out a bit, and I was a bit worried about that. It hung out nearly more than the tire. So I got these croc hinge brackets, and actually folds down flat on the rack. So yeah, as you can see, it's just. You, you can rub your roof rack along a tree and not Just damage the awning because I've Just seen plenty of awnings get ripped off. We've all seen our mate Sean rip a couple off, so mm -hmm. I didn't want to be the new Sean and rip an awning off. Got the got the snorkel and airbox on. It's, don't tell Sean this or you even this. Oh, you're a Land Rover guy. It's all right. It's got a 200 series filter in it, so oh, that's, that's been right. super yeah. handy to have that. Had to do breathers, put a compressor in for the lockers. Just heaps of little fiddly jobs, but yeah. um, I'm super happy with how it's working. I've got two tables on the back from Horizon Touring and the organizer in the back window, that thing. Yeah, I saw that. Cool. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if that was for me. I've never really been to tour, but on this trip, everything in the back is so easy to get to. And you fold down them tables, there's salt and pepper sauces, all the utensils up there. It's just it's just easier to live out of when you're on the road, pretty much. Is it a sign of your age, Jess, that you're uh, you're liking your touring mods a little bit more? Maybe yeah. you're, you're getting a little bit older. Yeah, it's yeah. It gone on the days where we had like eskies with up and goes in them mm. and you just go wheeling for a weekend, that'd be you. Yeah. Well, it is, but then also you did see me in one of those challenges, probably one of the early challenges, and I... You gave me a nod, I gave myself a nod, and I had another go yeah, and smashed yeah, my yeah, mirror. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. the silly Jesse is yeah. still there as well. Oh, you can't, you know, we'll never go out of that, mate. Mm. As soon as we uh, see something, we just need to drive up. It's like a red rag to a bull. So oh, I'm hearing most you. Definitely, I'm yeah. hearing you. Oh, another thing I didn't get done in time is my aircon. So the inside of the car, unfortunately, is now red. It's just, aircon? It's, it's never red. heard of her. What I'll, do you mean? No, all you need is some little flaps under your windscreen that go plop, but then and then you're good. But the dust can go in the front of yours and out the back. It doesn't yeah, don't go worry the about it, mate. Like Just roll your sides up like me and you're sweet. See, what you need in your life is a Parenti, I think. Mm. And, and, and I need one too after this. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> and, of course, the big Parenti. Yes. Which has been so much fun no, up here in Cape York. It's been a weapon, and I haven't seen you not smiling any of this no, trip. I've absolutely loved it. I reckon when all is said and done, I'm going to have to get myself one after all this because as a lot of you guys at home know and as you know as well mate mm. we are auctioning that vehicle off with all the proceeds going to young veterans uh at the end of all these cape york episodes so once mm. that all comes out it's very we'll cool put it up for auction with a hundred percent of the proceeds going to help out a 100 percent volunteer run charity safe to really say special. if people are bidding on it they'll be bidding against you i reckon mate you've yeah, fallen in love with this thing i really really have that mm. thing has been amazing hasn't let us down mm. it's a cape york car oh definitely it's it's been so cool plodding along behind that thing like it looks like you're in safari with the things rolled up and oh, just bouncing around oh nice. and it got the full land rover treatment from some i guess land rover specialists that yep. those being klr automotive in south windsor and uh, rick from kingpid fabrications up in queensland there he sent down a bunch of parts now being a charity build they were more than keen to uh to jump on board which is yeah, really cool that's awesome good on them yeah really really cool and so we took the vehicle uh to klr automotive and it had um originally had the standard pto winch in the front um, they're a fantastic winch, but I've used the Ultra all around the country mm -hmm. and I wanted to chuck an Ultra winch in the front. So that plate is a KLR winch plate and it actually just unbolts. So you could unbolt the old winch off with a plate and all, undo the um, drive shaft to the gearbox yeah. for the PTO winch, and then you can just chuck on an electric winch plate, bolt straight up to the nice chassis, and, easy. and good to go. On the front end as well, we also chucked on those steady spotlights. Steady jumped on board and sent a whole bunch of lights for camp lights and spotlights yeah. and that roof light bar. Mm -hmm. uh, and then moving into the engine bay, of course, KLR did the full treatment. They serviced the engine and the drive line and bearings and things like that, got it all squared away, as well as uh, maxi drive axles, which uh, were a combination of ones that KLR I had and Rick sent some down as well. They're also made in Australia. New shiny turbo under there, is that New thing? shiny turbo. So yeah. it did have a turbo originally, but uh, we weren't sure on the condition of it. So we decided just for the Cape, we'd uh, swap it out with one of KLR's turbo kits. Yeah. They've turbocharged like over 600 of these mm. vehicles. So they know what's going on. And I have to say, it has been mint. Like It, it goes hard too, like a big puff of smoke and it just takes off. I as you impressed. say, mate, it gets up and it goes. Yeah. Um, but uh, it also, you know, uh, you'll see soon, it may have towed one of the vehicles up from the mm. tele track and it absolutely loved it. Oh, power steering. They chucked a power steering kit in as well, KLR did, which has been fantastic. And I am so glad it was in oh, there. Because yeah. some of the rivers we drove into up here have been so deep and I needed to uh, be Johnny on the spot on the steering wheel mm -hmm. so it's good to actually have power steering you can see that nice four inch snorkel that was done by in-house fabrication mm -hmm. uh, they sent that down again jumping on board with the build and then all the plumbing for it and the roof light bar brackets were done by my mate carl who you know oh carl yeah booster built garage who's mm -hmm. the bloke who built the exhaust, the exhaust on the guy. pony yeah yep. 
and he's an absolute wizard. He did some TIG work under the bonnet, plumbing the snorkel up. It is a good thing he did because I have had water well over the bonnet of that vehicle. That bonnet has been underwater more times than it hasn't this big last time, week, I reckon. Big time. Now, of course, with all those reliability upgrades and maintenance upgrades, we couldn't come up here without sorting out the suspension. Mm. And Tough Dog threw in some new coils and shocks for it's it. It's a bit of a flex machine, too. There's, there's some big washouts in the tele track, and this thing with no lockers got done, no worries. It drives so good, man. Mm. It's comfy, it's nice. I think if you're coming up here, you should get your suspension looked at anyway as part of your maintenance like you know you do your bearings your oils your filters your fluids just get your suspension looked at before you come up here and i'm, I'm glad we did on the mm. parenti kayla put a new exhaust on it as well had a bunch of 12 volt work done just to run you know a fridge and some camp lights yeah, and yeah. just a bit more comfort at camp but yeah. um it has been such an awesome vehicle it's been a weapon dude like it's been well, it has been the leader of the pack, but I tell you what, if we haven't had that car, we wouldn't have been able to try some things we have, I don't know. Yeah, it, you know, the funny thing is, because it doesn't really seal that well, it's actually worked to its advantage mm. a little bit up here because some of the crossings are so deep. When I drive in, it fills up with water so quick that it kind of weighs down. It's almost like it's... It definitely doesn't float. <laughs> no, it does not float. It just gets down and gets into yeah. it. And of course, with those Kuma MT71s on there too, mate, they're, you know, the same tyres that you've got on your GU. Oh, they're grippy, those things. They are. I've got yeah. them on the... Uh, 70 and the pones and yeah. they've been uh worth their weight in gold up here oh, as well so most definitely mate i mean that's a lot of stuff i've just rattled off but mate that parenti really has been fantastic as we mentioned earlier we are going to be auctioning this vehicle off for young veterans through mm -hmm. grays.com a little bit later in the year it's going to be sad to see it go it will be but I, um, you might even cry i reckon if you don't win the bid i reckon so but i think uh what will make it a little bit um easier to swallow will be the fact that all that money will go to such yeah, an amazing that's cause. That's awesome, that's all happening. Big time, big yeah. time. Now, mate, that's the Parenti. Mm. That's, I could sit here and talk about Land Rovers all afternoon until that sun goes down over there. He's but, a uh, full Land Rover guy now. Don't I am, I'm the, loving it. Forget them. the Hilux jockey. You should hear Land Justin and I just yeah. chatting about Land Rovers the whole mm -hmm. time. But um, it's time to go through the new camera car. Mm. It's pretty much a twin to the other one. This one could possibly be a bit cooler, maybe. Mm, we'll have a look. Right, you lot are always handing us more content, so more content means different crews out on the road. So we had to build another camera car. This one behind us, it's not the old one, it hasn't had a revamp. This is a brand new one. Now, why do we pick a Lee Sprung ZD30 Patrol again? GVM, you can get a mad GVM upgrade on them. They're reliable and they're tough and harder. They just get the job done. So let's have a little walk through and show you guys what we've done. Up the front, we've gone the exact same as my GU. Our mates at Razzler, they probably make the best in the business for GU bar work. We've got the big new style as a bar. I tell you what, for a Series 4, this has got a mad approach angle. We've used it in Cape plenty of times. This has been buried in the mud and we've popped out either side every time. Down the side, we've got these super staunch brush rails. Now these are so strong compared to the other camera car and proper sliders with a tread plate in the top so you can't fall through and hurt your ankle. So we've tried to make this thing as bush proof as we possibly can. Now Matt Taylor from Auto House has gone through and refreshed the fuel system, new injectors, new injector rail, all that sort of stuff. He's gonna put a G turbo on, big four inch snorkel, big custom intake, retains the factory map and everything. I'll tell you what, this thing has got a little bit of get up and go. So sometimes it's even hard to keep up with the camera boys. After all these power upgrades, you guys saw what happened to the other camera car in the high country, the clutch went. So we didn't want to have any reliability issues in the bush. So we threw a uni clutch in the new camera car and the boys are absolutely loving the feel of it. It's holding the power quite well, but it's all good to have power, but you've got to get it to the ground. And that is where these Kumo MT71s come in. These are the exact same ones I've got on the G. And I'll tell you what, they're grippy in the mud, in the sand, even on the bitumen. These things are unreal. The camera boys are loving it. They never normally have full muddy. So they're they're a bit sport here. Now on the back of this camera car, I've gone for something a little bit different and a little bit shorter. I've gone for a TC Boxes tray and canopy. This TC Boxes canopy we've got in the new GU is super strong. It had everything we needed to make it through the Cape. Under tray toolboxes, dual jerry can holders, a spare wheel carrier, and even a trundle tray drawer. Now, it's a little bit shorter. The boys are worried about fitting everything in there, but our mates at Pinnacle have done a fit out on the inside, full custom to suit their needs. We've got a little pigeonhole for each camera here. Two little drawers, one for each cameraman. Up here, we've got all the little GoPros, batteries and stuff, and underneath, a table to do some work on, to put the laptop up there, do data logging at night. Of course, there's spot for a carton of 4X in here. Cheeky little 4X, everyone loves some of them. Now, all the charging stations, all that sort of stuff here, there is plenty of room, and the boys are worried about the smaller canopy, but they're actually loving it. <laughs> They've left heaps of stuff at home that they don't even use anyway. Now, the boys are quite spoiled in the new camera car. They've probably got the biggest Red Arc setup you can get. They've got a 3,000 watt inverter, heaps of lithium power. They've got the Red Vision setup here to select all the things. You can see your charging rate, you can see your solar input, all that sort of stuff. 
they can charge the camera beer, they can keep their food and beers cold. It's just a great setup. Now that's just a little bit of what we need to make this show happen for you guys on YouTube. So quick little run around, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna get back in my chair and sit down and have a beer with Jocko. Well, Jesse, mate, some epic, epic builds. The Parenti, mm. your GU, and of course, the new camera car. Yeah. It's been pretty amazing. Mm. Having all three new rigs up in Cape York for the first time, it's been pretty well, yeah. special. Of course, we've got one of our favorite new segments here, mate, where we look at some top buys from our mates at graze.com on mm. the auctions there. We've picked a couple to go through. Here's my first pick, is a 2017 Mitsubishi Triton. I picked one of these because my mate has one, and I've driven it a fair bit. It's a rig. I really you, like you it. You can't frighten the Triton. No, you really can't. You really can't, mate. And this one's got around 180,000 Ks, which... Just run in. Yeah, just yeah. run in. And they're, they're good cars. They're good oh, value they are, for yeah. money. Yeah. They drive well. They drive yeah. nice. Perfect for, you know, like your Monday to Friday. My mate's one. He drives it to work Monday to Friday and goes yeah. camping in it. It would yeah. be a perfect rig for oh, that. Oh, yeah. Mint for that. Definitely. And then finally, mate, I picked this one. Now, to be Ooh, honest, I America. picked this one because... I really liked it. It's yeah. uh, an F350, mate. That is a um, big dog. It's done 145,000 Ks. Now, look, to be honest, this one would probably not be cheap at auctions, mm. but it was a rig, and Could I like it. It would be cheaper than a classified ad, though. It would be. It would be. It's already been converted and good to go. It's got a 6.7 litre diesel, mate. Big boy. Big dog. That's wow. for hauling. And uh, if any of my American mates, um, you know, they love their F trucks over yeah. there, Dimitri and Justin, if they're watching, will uh, probably be frothing on I'll this appreciate one. appreciate that. But, yeah, uh, definitely, mate. Yeah, it's an absolute rig. Yeah. Here's one I picked, you know, it, it could be a surprise to you, but a 2001 Toyota Land Cruiser, and it's a GXL, it's a flash one, mate. Yeah, so I reckon you've made a good choice here, because mm -hmm. this is a 1FZ, mm -hmm. and I reckon 1FZ 105 series are some of the best value for money four-wheel oh, drives yeah. you can get. Mate, a lot of people are scared by buying a petrol four-wheel drive, but what you save in your purchase price, that's going to buy you a lot of fuel for adventures and spare money for mods. This one has got high Ks, it's got 390,000 on it, but it's a petrol, so there's less things to worry about like injectors and injector pump and stuff like on a diesel. It's and those cheaper. one FZ mates, they are one FZs mate, I should say, they are bulletproof. Oh, they, they're like a TB, but the Toyota version, you, but better. impossible to kill. Yeah. I probably wouldn't go that better far. Better than a TB42. Nah, nah, mate, nah, nah, everything nah. is better than a TB42. <laughs> Yeah, we're not getting on this. Next one, next one. I thought I'd pick a new modern car. This is 2017 model. It's only just ticked over, just over 100,000. Perfect, as we said, blank canvas. It's got a tray if you're a trader. It's got a bull bar. It's got a few little things, but blank canvas, low Ks, good reliable work car slash weekenders. Well, mate, there's some pretty good picks from uh, graze.com. And of mm. course, this is uh, a new segment in Beers in the Shed, and we'll have some more picks for next time. But mm. if you're keen to check out some absolute bargains, jump on the graze.com. I usually do that um, when I wake up in the morning. I just have a little scroll through yeah. the auctions and see what I can find. Yeah. I'm yet to find any parentes there, but uh, mm. if I do... There'll be one there soon, though. There will be one there mm. soon, that one in particular. So mm -hmm. uh, keep an eye out on graze.com for that. All right, mate, so now is the time for our RSEA Tradies Ute of the Month giveaway, where three lucky winners will get themselves a $500 gift voucher to RSCA. Not a bad prize. Yeah, very big useful. Time, big time. And mm. of course, these are our three winners. We've mm. picked these guys because we reckon they have the most customized trade tradey Utes from yeah. everyone Multi that's purpose. entered. Multi-purpose yeah, indeed. We've got Jamie's big GU42. Now, of course, there's just something to be said about a big GU TD42 set up as a tough tourer. There's a fair bit of travel in the front end and a comp style tray on the back and it's running a lot of power through that TD42, which means it's going to be a weapon no matter what you throw at it. Plus, it's the little things like that rooftop tent being recessed behind the cab that really make this a well thought out, heavily modified rig for either the day to day or work site or the weekend tracks. Well done, Jamie. We've got Ben Malcolm in his NP300. This is a super tidy rig. Set up to go just about anywhere with that small single hoop to mount his lights on, a colour match style and a full canopy setup on the back that will store all the gears and tools you'd ever need. Plus, with that coil sprung rear end from a factory, it's good to see a modern dual cab getting put to good use like this one. Nice work, Ben. And, of course, we've got Jake Keys in a sassed mm, N70, mate. That is mate. cool. That's very Brother. cool. Brother. Yeah, I really like it. Solid axle swapping N70 Hilux has become very popular mainly due to their reliability and the good amount of power you can get out of them. Not to mention that swapping the factory suspension over to something bigger and stronger can modify them into unstoppable off-road weapons. Looks like Jake has taken his modified N70 on some pretty wild tracks, but I'm sure those coilovers in the front also get him anywhere he needs to go on the job site, and having that tray set up gives him plenty of flexibility with whatever he needs to carry. 
killer rig, mate. Now, of course, these three lucky winners have got themselves a $500 gift voucher from RSEA Safety, mate. Pretty epic Not prize. Not a bad prize, yeah. And if you're watching this and you would like to enter, we're going to be looking for the next month for our best budget trader ute. We're going to pick three lucky winners for the best budget trader ute. Now, to enter, all you got to do is chuck up a picture on your Facebook or Instagram of your Budget Trader Ute, tag RSEA Safety, and you'll go in the draw to win a $500 gift voucher. They could be in the shed next month. Good luck. Mate, now is my favorite part of the shed where we go from our shed into yours, and we have a look at some rigs, some fails, and of course, the kids segment, mate, mm. where some you yeah, know, drawings, some cool stuff. Really, really cool Lego stuff. Lego cars, all yeah. that sort of jazz. Really cool, let's get into it, mate, straight away. Here's one we got sent in from a fellow patrol driver, mate. His IG is the real Obi, and I tell you what, he's probably super lucky this didn't turn into a complete fail. He's done the same Shawno trick on the Climbies waterfall track, read it up, and I tell you what, if you guys can't see this, going to paint a picture. It's probably, what, 100 meter, 150 yeah, meter drop? It is, it is rude. Into Proper waves rude. crashing on rocks. If you roll off there, you're DED. You're not with us any longer. So the real Obi there, I reckon he might have had to back out of that and change his pants. It says here he backed down, realigned, and got up. So good on him for having another go, but big time. That is a scary spot to do that at. Yeah, I would not want to be, <laughs> be that no. bloke. It looks pretty gnarly. And of course, uh, mate, we're going straight into a rig here, mm. and um, I know this vehicle well. This is from Hayden Camp. Mm -hmm. 106 Flex, mate. That is an LM106, and look at this thing. I've Beautiful. seen that thing out of Genoa before, mate. Yeah. It is a tidy rig for an old very truck. Very tidy. Very mm. tidy indeed. Uh, it flexes well. It's mm. nice and clean. He looks after it. He's yeah. built it well. Hayden, mate, good on you. This is an absolute weapon. And an LM106 single cab, there's just mm. something about them. They're, they're, just, they're just cool, mm. dude. Yep. Here we go here, mate. One from the kids. Remy has sent this in and his son, Max. He's actually made an off-road track there for his Hot Wheel cars. How That's cool so is that? That's so cool. All that the way awesome. from the UK, All the way from mate. the UK. And he said, congratulations, wishing the well million. Thanks, mate. We couldn't have done it without him, could we? Yeah. I mean, it's not just uh, Australian four drivers mm. who watch four drive 24-7 now. You know, we've got over a million subscribers yeah. and from all over the world. It's mm. pretty epic. We wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. From mm. little legends like Max and, of course, Remy. Yeah. Thanks for watching. He is cheering. Look at yeah, him. Yeah, he's loving it. A fail, mate. Here is a fail. What do we got here? This is from Brooks Off-Road Photography. Looks like they're doing a bit of mud bogging in the waters. I know the exact bog we hole do. that they're about to drive in, mate. Yeah. I think is you've it a been, deep one? It's a bit of a deep boy, mm. but um, I think you've driven Daryl into this one as well. Oh, true. There yeah. you go. He's about to drop down. Ready? Oh, down he, there goes. he goes. Plop. Stuck. And that's it. Oh, no. Spewing. Yeah. So there's no snorkel on there. Obviously, it's not super deep, but yeah. uh, if you do stall in, in mud like that, it's not ideal. Yeah. It looks pretty. It looks like it was pretty clean, the 80 mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very clean 80. But uh, from Brooks Off-Road Photography, you know, that sort of stuff happens. Sometimes you've got to walk those bog holes and you just send the mate in you like the least mm -hmm. to walk the bog hole, which is why I always get sent in. What? He's worked it out. No, 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 no. It's not. It's just because you're normally at the front. You've got to walk. Oh, out. is that what? Yeah, okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah yeah, 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 fair. Anyway, mate, have a look at this rig of a Jimny set from Taylor Patton. Love look at it. The bar Love work. it. It's two tone, white and black. It's got some pretty big tires in it too. That is um. It's out there getting used, which is the best Yeah, it part. looks like Taylor can take a pretty good photo yeah, of it too. It's out there getting after it. Look at that yeah. flex too. What yeah. a rig. Mate, another one from the kids. This is from Mum, Sally and Gus, who's 11, who's drawn the Dirty 30, the best car in the world. I don't know about that. Poor mate. Gus has been sort of led astray. Led astray, <laughs> led astray yeah. but Gus, mate, that's an awesome Good drawing. drawing Look at the suspension he's yeah. nailed there too. It's, this has got twin shocks front twin and rear. Shocks, that's yeah. what you want. It's got wow. the canopy, it's got everything you need. That is uh, a pretty good drawing mm. of the Dirty 30. Gus, well done, mate. I love it. Well, mate, as always, there's been some pretty epic fails, some mm. beautiful rigs, and the kids have yep. done some, sent in some really cool mm -hmm. stuff, mate. Really cool stuff. Now, we're going to pick a couple of lucky winners, yep. mate. I'm going to go first with uh, a rig, my rig of choice. Yep. It's got to be Hayden Camp with that 106, oh, mate. Oh, I would have chose that too, mate. That thing yep. is immaculate, and it gets used, which is even cooler. Yeah, good to see. Mm. Good to see an old Luxie out there on the tracks. Yeah. Hayden, you got yourself a 4X. 4X merch pack. Now, mm -hmm. mate, what about fails? What should we choose for fails? Mm. I reckon the real Obi has earned himself a 4X merch pack. He really has. If people haven't been there, it is very scary. It might look like a big wheel lift, but the consequence, if that one any bigger, He's earned it in my house. Yeah, big time, big mm. time. Mate, 4X merch pack coming your way. And of course, mate, with the kids, they get themselves a snatch voucher. Snatch voucher yeah. And for me, it's got to go to young Max over oh, in the UK. Mate, Max is frothing that four-wheel drive setup he's made. And the best part is he's got us on the background He too. does. Max, I hope you get yourself a nice Land Rover over in the UK mm. one day, mate, and uh, get out wheeling in it. 
Now, of course, if you've seen this segment, you would love to get one of your rigs, one of your fails, or you've got a young future four wheel driver who has built something cool, drawn something cool, you mm. name it. To get it into the show, you just need to upload it onto your Facebook or Instagram. Use the hashtag 4Drive247Fails, 4Drive247Rigs, or 4Drive247Kids. Mm. That's on the official Facebook group, TikTok, or Instagram. Mm -hmm. Now, mate, as we mentioned before, coming up, we've got some pretty yeah, epic stuff. Yeah, there is some cool stuff coming. And the best way for people to see that is like and subscribe to all of our content. Like YouTube, subscribe to that, hit the notification bell, Instagram. I think we've got a TikTok now. Yeah. We've got a Facebook. Like it all. And just so you can be notified when we've got stuff coming out, you can sit down and make sure you've got time to watch it. Yeah, mate, exactly. I'm just going to quick fire off a couple of things we've got coming up. We've got the Kimberley. We've got Cape York. We've got Graham getting stuck in floods in off-grid. We've got your first time mm. to America. Mm -hmm. We bought a new rig over in America mm. too that you're going to see very rig soon. Is the right way to rig. explain that R-I-G spells higher. Mm. I mean, oop. Um, so make sure you keep an eye on all our social medias for that. Mate, I reckon that will just about we'll do us. Up, yeah. We're just about due for another beer. We are. Mate. Cheers to that. And we are not done up in Cape York yet. Once we finish this and pack up, we're heading back into the bush mm. to do some more exploring. So, mate, I reckon a couple more of these set up camp mm -hmm. and then we'll get back into the bush. Sounds good, mate. Back oh, I nearly dropped my beer. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Catch you next time.